Greetings, this is Professor Lazarus again and we will be talking about bank reconciliations today. Before I get into the discussion, I'm going to step aside for a minute and give you a chance to review some of the information I have on the whiteboard behind me and I'll be right back. Okay, now that you've had a chance to look at some of the information, let's talk about why do we do bank reconciliations? What is it? Well, there are multiple reasons to perform a bank reconciliation. Number one, it's an internal control tool. When we perform a bank reconciliation, we review our canceled checks. As we review our canceled checks, it gives us an opportunity to see if there is any fraudulent activity taking place and making sure that every check that has been processed is indeed a legitimate check that we have written uh, for our company's transactions. Second, when you're at the end of the month, you tend to have two different balances. You will have, in this case, let's look at Ellie Dan's company as of June 30th, and Ellie Dan's company's books shows a balance of $10,000. For you accounting majors, I've also noted that this is the same balance that's reflected in the general ledger cash account. So Ellie Dan's company has one of the cash balances as per her books. Next, Ellie also gets a bank statement from her bank that shows how much money she has in her bank account as of the same date, June 30th. And in this case, her bank balance reflects a balance of only 8,997. So two balances for Ellie Dan's company as of the same period, June 30th. So the question then is, which of these balances is correct? What is Ellie's true cash balance as of June 30th? To answer that question, we go through a bank reconciliation, identifying items that cause these balances to be different. And you will see as we go through the bank reconciliation, the items that are different are caused by timing differences. When items affect one side, the books in one month, and then the bank balance in a different month. So let's get right into the numbers here. And again, the balance per books for June 30th, $10,000. To that, we're gonna add certain items and then deduct certain items. From an addition standpoint, I have collection on note, $500. This could be, for instance, an example where Ellie Dance Company is a small company. And so what Ellie might have done is have an arrangement with her bank when customers Instead of sending checks to her directly all the time, she may decide in some cases for the customers to send a check directly to the bank where the bank serves as a collection uh, agent. So what happens then? In this example, a customer would have sent a check to Ellie's bank directly during the month of June, let's say June 15th for instance. When the bank received the check, the bank processed the check and deposited this $500 in Ellie's bank account immediately. So when this happened, Ellie's bank balance increased by $500 in the month of June. So this bank statement balance of $8,997 already includes this $500 that may have come during the month of June, as I just outlined. However, since Ellie never got the check directly at her offices, at the end of the month, her book balance of $10,000 does not include this $500 check that went to the bank directly. So at this point, we add the $500 to Ellie's book balance 
to bring it in line with her bank statement balance, which already includes this $500. Okay, next, depositor error. In this example, there are no depositor errors that affect the, the book balance in terms of any additions. Later on in the discussion, I will give you some guidelines to help you understand errors and how to handle them from a bank reconciliation perspective. Next, we'll look at the deductions. We have service charges of $50. As you may know, that banks oftentimes will charge customers for the privilege of maintaining a bank account and providing services to the customer. So in this case, the bank is charging Ellie Dance Company $50. Now, how does the bank get their $50? Do they send Ellie an invoice and then does Ellie cut a check out to the bank for $50? No, doesn't work that way. The bank is going to make sure that they have access to your money at a, on a certain date of the month. So when that date approaches, then the bank will take out the $50 from Ellie's bank account immediately. How can the bank do that? Because Ellie will have authorized the bank to do that. When would Ellie have authorized the bank to do that? Usually at the time when she opened the account and signed a bunch of papers, well buried in those papers would be a clause that authorizes the bank to take out the service charges on a certain date of the month. Let's assume the 28th of each month. So in this case, the bank will have already taken out $50 from Ellie's bank account on June 28th. So if they took out the $50 on June 28th, then the bank balance on June 30th already reflects this $50 as having come out. However, this $50 did not come out of Ellie's book balance, and so at this point in the bank reconciliation, we are adjusting Ellie's book balance downwards by $50. So that's the rationale behind this deduction. Depositor error. Now, when going through the records, we find that Ellie's bookkeeper made an error that affected her book balance. So let's say, hypothetically, during the month on a deposit uh, that Ellie was making, let's say for $1,000, the bookkeeper put 1125 as the number on Ellie's books. So even though the deposit was made for $1,000, Ellie's bookkeeper showed a deposit of 1125 going in. That means Ellie's bookkeeper made an error of overstating the deposit by $125, and that caused Ellie's book balance to be higher, to be overstated by 125. So now at this point, what we need to do is we need to subtract the effect of that error. We need to subtract the 125 from Ellie's book balance to offset this error that was made. And that's a rationale for this deduction here. So we go through the math and we end up with an adjusted cash balance of 10,325. This is also what I refer to as our true cash balance. So Ellie's true cash balance as of June 30th is 10,325. However, we're not done with the reconciliation yet. We need to verify this number by making some adjustments to the bank statement balance. And, and we should end up with the same 10,325 again. 